This tutorial will help you to very quickly get your Trendnet wireless router supplied by Paramount Broadband up and running. So let's take a look at connecting the cables. At the moment you will have a network cable connected from the back of your permanent modem directly to your PC or laptop computer. Before you continue, verify that you have internet access. Now let's take a look at the back of your Trendnet router. There is a power button on the right hand side. You connect the power cable into the power slot and you will connect a cable from the permanent broadband modem into the WAN port of the Trendnet. Let's take a close look again. So we have the power button on the right hand side. Next we have the power socket and then we have the WAN port. And then we have four other ports where you can connect other computers. So let's connect the power cable to the back of the router and plug the other end into the mains. Next, take the cable that's currently connected into your desktop or laptop computer and plug it into the WAN port of the Trendnet wireless router. Take the grey cable that's supplied and plug it into port 1. Now plug the other end of the grey cable supplied into your laptop or desktop computer. Now switch on the wireless router using the power button at the back. The wireless router will begin its startup sequence. It will take approximately one minute for the router to start up before you can use it. Keep an eye on the lights at the front. First of all the power light will come on. Next the status light will come on. The status light will always be flashing. The WAN light will then come on and this will flash to indicate that there is traffic. And finally the WLAN light will come on. This will also be flashing to indicate that there is traffic. The router is now ready and at this point you should verify that you have internet access on your computer. Now let's look at configuring the wireless settings of your new router. Open your internet browser. In the very top in the address bar, type in 192.168.10.1 and press enter. This will bring you to the router login page. The username is admin in lowercase and the password is also admin. Click on login. You are now logged on to your wireless router and ready to set it up. Next we recommend that you reset your wireless router to factory settings. This will probably fix any problems that you have been having with the router. To do this, click on Tools. Next click on Settings. Then click on Restore under the Restore Factory Settings option and click on OK. Your router will now reset to factory settings and you will be ready to continue after one minute. Now we will show you how to give your wireless network a name and also to set up security so that only you are able to use your broadband connection wirelessly. So log on to your router again, the username is admin and the password is also admin and click on login. Click on wireless. The SSID is the name that your computer will see when you connect wirelessly later on. We suggest you change this to something that makes sense to you. In this example we are calling it your network name. By default the wireless router is set to an auto wireless channel. Sometimes if you find you have poor coverage or you cannot see your wireless network then you should untick this and by trial and error pick a channel that works best for you. We find that channel 4 is very compatible with most systems. After you have made these changes, click on apply. Next click on security. We recommend that you do enable security on your router. And bear in mind that by default the router does not have security enabled. Setting security means that only you have internet access. 
Otherwise, other people, such as neighbours or people passing by, could be using your internet. For Xbox users, you will need to use WPA type security. After you decide the type security you wish to use, you, next you pick a passphrase. This will be the wireless key for your network. Enter a password that is difficult to guess and is at least 8 characters long. After you have made these changes, click on apply. Your wireless router is now set up. To access it wirelessly, then on your computer, click on the wireless name that you chose, click on connect, and then enter your password. We have other tutorials which explain how to connect to a wireless network wirelessly. Now we will show you how to enter a static IP address into the router and how to enable NAT Type 2 for gaming. You should only follow these steps if you know what you are doing. So log on to the router using 192.168.10.1 entering the username admin in lowercase and the password is also admin and click on login. Click on main. Next click on WAN. Under the connection type select specify IP. Technical support will have given you these details so you need to enter the IP address in the IP address section, the subnet mask in the subnet mask section Enter the default gateway into the default gateway setting. And finally, our two DNS servers. If you do not know what these values should be, then please contact technical support. When you've entered the settings, click on apply. To verify that your IP address has been set correctly, go to the website www.whatismyip.com. The IP address displayed should be the very same IP address that you entered into the router. If you're a gamer, you will need NAT Type 2. To do this, log on to the router and enter 192.168.10.1 into the address bar of your browser, log on to the router with the username admin and the password is also admin, click on login. Next click on access and click on DMZ. Now at this point you will need to know what the IP address of your games console is. Click on DMZ enable and enter the IP address of your games console. If you are uncertain what your IP address for your games console is, then you need to contact the manufacturer of your device. We also suggest that you give your games console a static IP address of 192.168.10.2.